Uh, so we have two goals for multiple means of representation. Uh, two goals, I'm sorry, for this session. And the first goal is to apply uh, UDL to apply the guidelines to practice. And the second goal is to understand how book builder is a example of the guideline. Have people used book builder? How many have used it? Oh. Thank you. I'm getting uh, stuff. Thank you. Um, so this is one representation of an expert learner. And can I have a copy of the guideline? An expert learner, as we said yesterday, relative to multiple means of representation, is knowledgeable and resourceful. Thank you. So I had lots of fun playing with Wordle last night in looking at the web link, and the link is right along the bottom here, and that will be on the wiki, and that will access the page on expert learner. But as I look at that, or as you look at that, uh, what jumps up? What do you see? What? Say it out louder, please. Prior knowledge. Yep, I saw that too. Also, notice that in this, um, some of the verbs that were leaders were capitalized. So bring, recognize, activate, and I think no was the other one. No. So those were the four bullet points uh, relative to expert learner. And I thought that was a cool visual. However, I had a hard time looking at that. So this is a fairly traditional way of looking at the same information. Uh, but two representations, and you choose your own. So uh, this is what we are aiming for when we're looking at the UDL guidelines. OK, again, just a little uh, repeat of yesterday. Uh, this is the principal level. This is the guideline level. And these are the checkpoints. Uh, David went through these a little bit more specifically, so I'm not going to spend much time on those, because we're going to be using them in just a minute. Again, uh, this is the principal level. Uh, this is the guideline level, options for language. Uh, Jan asked me about mathematics, so here we have just, and our person on staff also helped us expand mathematical <coughs> expressions and symbols. And then the uh, third guideline, options for comprehension. So, what we're going to do is a little activity, and we're going to do a little role playing if you don't mind. But this is a role that you could very easily be in, in your school or in your environments. Um, how do you use the guidelines? OK, that's all right. We're going to use the guidelines in uh, one way this morning and another way this afternoon. This morning, we're going to use guidelines in terms of you being a person that has to make a decision about curriculum. And you're going to use, and we're going to focus on multiple means of representation. So I'm going to show you um, a piece of curriculum that was developed actually for the pioneers, of Verizon Pioneers and Telecom Volunteers. And it was specifically developed uh, with Canada in mind. We worked with the Canadian um, telecom partners. Have people seen Power Up to Read? Does anybody know that? OK, great. This is a, um, a website. And it was designed with tutors. I'm still getting feedback, Kathy. No, I'm sorry. I called for tech support. No, OK, I apologize um, for that. Let's see. Let's see. Is that better? Yeah. I move it down. OK, maybe that's better. OK. Um, this program was specifically designed for the pioneer uh, volunteers, uh, apparently the retired company volunteers work with students after school. And they focus on supporting academic skills. And one of the skills that they have to support was literacy. Quiet. Well, these are volunteers for uh, Verizon. They didn't have very much training in literacy, so they were doing good things that you would do is sit and read with middle school students. But it wasn't really helping to support students learning about literacy. So what we did is we developed a highly supported tutorial program to support the volunteers. This program is freely available to um, people in the volunteer end. However, 
Uh, Kathy has posted direct the information about Pewter on the site. You can call them and you can think about using this program for paraprofessionals that need help in understanding strategies that support comprehension. This could be used with parent groups. This could be used with first time teachers who really need to understand what is the pedagogy, what are good research based comprehension strategies. There's a manual on the site, there is a how to, and there are four um, books. It's geared towards students in fourth, excuse me, in fourth and fifth grade. So you're going to be in a position to make a decision if in fact you want to use this program. And the uh, criteria for you right now, because you're all versed in UDL, is will this address the variability of my students' needs in grades four and five? And the way that you would do that is by looking at your guidelines. And we're not going to deal with um, multiple needs of action and expression. We haven't talked about that yet. But when I was reviewing the program last night, you know, it's kind of hard to say I'm only going to look at multiple means of representation. Because there are areas that really dip into the other uh, principles. So if your eye goes across and you say, oh, this program really does a good job. And at the end, we want you to say, I think I would either call up and get this program, make it available for my folks, or it doesn't do what I want it to do. So please look at it with the UDL guidelines, and I'm presenting it as um, pitching the program. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Is, and this happens in schools all the time. When we were, uh, when I was at the elementary, we had a major discussion about reading programs. We had the people come in and present, and then our teams really had good discussions about which, what are we going to purchase. I know that in Alberta, you have a couple of programs that you have to purchase, so this might you don't? Oh, good. All right, great. So and this isn't even purchasable. But, but think about the techniques and the process we're going to use. Because this is a process that you can employ when you're looking at programs for purchase. So using the guidelines, first of all, does the curriculum materials provide options for perception? Does the curriculum materials provide options for language, mathematical expression, and symbols? And does the curriculum um, materials provide options for comprehension? Um, I'm going to just let you look at all of the checkpoints.